Imagine you are taking a college class and you find out that in this college class you are going to have to do a group project. Are you thinking to yourself, woohoo, group project? Or are you thinking to yourself, oh great, group project? If you are thinking to yourself, oh great, group project, you are not alone. Unfortunately, many people are not thrilled about the idea of working in groups. A lot of people have had bad experiences, and so it's not everybody's favorite thing to do. But of course, there are reasons why we work together in groups. We have the saying, two heads are better than one. If you could take your test in groups, that would be fabulous, right? So we realize the value of working in groups. It's just that if we've had bad experiences, that keeps us from acknowledging the good parts. So today we're going to talk about great groups. Seven Secrets for Successful Sessions. My name is Diana Sage. I teach speech communication at Collin College, Preston Ridge Campus in Frisco, Texas. Now the seven secrets are maintenance, timing, goals, facilitation, communication, structure, and issues. Of course, we'll get into each one in more detail. The first one is maintenance. Maintenance communication is the social communication that occurs in group meetings. It turns out human beings are social creatures. We need that maintenance communication. You may have noticed that when you come into a group meeting, people usually spend the first few minutes just reconnecting on a personal level. They'll be going, oh, hey, how's your dog? And the next person will say, oh, he's fine. I took him to the vet. Turns out you can't give your dog chocolate. Who knew? And now we know you can't give dogs chocolate. And you'll be thinking, oh my gosh, could we please just get on the topic? Well, it turns out you can't be impatient about maintenance communication because it's part of the group process. You have to have it in order for the group to function smoothly. Think of maintenance communication as the oil that keeps the machine running smoothly. Maintaining good relationships between group members is as important as focusing on the task. If you've ever worked someplace where people just did not get along, or there was one person that everybody hated, that gives you an idea of how important that maintenance communication is. So make an effort to be courteous, to get along with people, to connect on a personal level. You don't have to be BFFs, but you do need to be able to get along with the people you're working with. And that's what that maintenance communication is for. Now you may have noticed that if you try to squash that maintenance communication, it will pop up in the middle of the meeting. So you do need to dedicate a couple of minutes at the beginning of each meeting to that maintenance communication. One thing I have noticed is that a lot of times groups will develop their own unspoken rules, their norms. So for example, if you get to your meeting at 9 o'clock, it was supposed to start at 9 o'clock, but everybody's already there, they're all already chatting away, that probably means they have established a norm of getting to the meetings about five minutes early so they can do the maintenance communication and get it out of the way before they get on task. They didn't decide this out loud, it just developed naturally. And it's not something anybody is going to take you aside and tell you about. It's not in the employee handbook. You're just supposed to figure it out through your good powers of observation. So always try to get to meetings about five minutes early at least, and you'll also want to stay about five minutes late. Because there is a timing aspect of this. There is a time for maintenance communication at the beginning and end of group meetings and a time for the actual task focus in the middle. So it's like a bell curve. You have about five minutes at the beginning for maintenance, 50 minutes most of the hour for the actual task focus, and then five minutes at the end. So in an hour meeting, about 10 minutes will be dedicated to maintenance. Five minutes at the beginning, five minutes at the end. And that may actually happen before the meeting ever convenes officially and after it has officially adjourned. So you have to pay attention to that group's norms. Another thing that will make your meetings and your group work a lot better, a lot more effective, is if you're careful about how you set goals and how you work towards the goals. Anytime you have a group project, set a clear, reasonable goal and stick to it. Do not allow your group to go off and follow some pie in the sky fancy thing that is unrelated to the original goal. That's called goal shift. And sometimes it happens without realizing it. The group is shifting towards a different goal that's not actually compatible with the original goal. And by the time they figure out that they're way out in left field, it can be too late to go back and even accomplish the original goal. There's a similar concept in computer programming. It's called feature creep. It's where you have an idea for a computer program, 
and you keep adding new features and adding new features until what you end up with is a bloated, overly complicated thing that won't work at all. It won't even do the original simple thing it was supposed to do. So set a clear, reasonable goal and stick to it and make sure all group members are working towards the same goal. You would think this would be a no-brainer, but it is not. You would be amazed how many times people will say, all right, let's do these tasks before we get to the meeting in person, the very first meeting, and then they get to the meeting and they realize they have all done hours worth of work that now they're going to have to scrap and start over because they had not clearly articulated what the actual goal was. So they weren't all on the same page. Make sure everybody knows what the goal is and everybody's working towards that same goal before anybody does any work.